What monster would you like to see have an aquatic version and why? So take a monster that exists, make it watery. An ocean, a lake, a river, a bog, underwater, cave, river, I don't know. Some kind of water adaptation or version of a monster. One of the things I love about Dungeons and Dragons is we don't just have to think about this monster. If we want to make it, we can. And after putting some time and thought into this, I'm going to do it. I'm going to create this monster because it's going to be a lot of fun. I went with the Medusa. I thought that would be a lot of fun. So we would have an aquatic Medusa, which would have the bottom half of a mermaid. So it'd be, you know, a top half woman, bottom half mermaid. And then you've got, you know, either water moccasins or eels for hair so I, th I think she transfers really easy to ocean water or the sea or, or whatnot and of course she's still going to have that turn to stone ability Th this might sound really bad but um I i've always heard the, the term of like concrete boots and stuff so instead of turning you all the way to stone she's just going to turn your feet and ankles into stone so you'll just like sink to the ocean floor and you can't move but then i was like man that's that's a that's a cruel thing to do so i was like well maybe she wants to keep you as a pet so then she'll like be able to put like an air bubble around you and like take you in and so you got like these uh stone boots with an air bubble and you just become aquatic medusa's pet not turned to stone turned to coral <laughs> turned to coral there you go well for me and I've, I've never actually used this i know a bullet is already you know a type of land shark so you could say well in water we already have a regular shark but i kind of like the idea of a, of a like a semi-aquatic bullet maybe that can also go into a river because i just think it's such a cool i've always loved the bullet is one of my favorite monsters since i i'm having played in D&D, I don't want to date myself, but since seventh grade, and that makes it a really long time, like 40 years, and the bullet's always been one of my favorite monsters. So I'd love to see one that could burrow, but then also swim in the river, come up on a boat or whatever, or people trying to cross the river. Only when I saw that question did I think of that, though. An aquatic bullet, that's what I want. Not a shark, but an aquatic bullet. I was thinking about all this. I actually had a list in case someone took my ideas, and that's why I'm, I'm happy I'm kind of in the middle. But I love intelligent creatures. A lot of D&D, &D, uh, their settings establish an aquatic environment as being wild, you know, filled with monsters, you know, worse than what we see in, like, wild forests. So I love the idea of putting in something that's intelligent, like a, a civilization, something that's more than what we expect. Like, I'd love to insert, like, Disney's or DC's Atlantis into, into an adventure to actually give them texture, give them a full setting. They're not just people running around, stabbing things, and then fishing and having these kind of uh, kind of wild elk communities even, even better still the aliens from the abyss and and having them incorporate into your DD setting the most advanced society on the planet is actually an unknown undersea society that nobody knows about well we take somebody who's advanced civilization and shove them underwater when i read this question initially my head just exploded with ideas and 90 percent of them were just so dumb i see images in my head of river angels where they have penguin flippers on their back instead of wings. I thought of aquatic lycanthropes where were sharks would be cool, but what about were walruses, were clownfish, were frogs? I actually had a player in one of my campaigns play a were turtle. He would go to the bar and insist that they give him scummy pond water to drink. It was it was a blast. You could even have were eels, though that gets a little bit weird with the spelling because half of the letters in that would be E. There could be aquatic treants that are just walking things of coral instead of wood underwater and they just like keep track of all of the nature they're basically like these giant coral druids the one that i like the best was aquatic constructs and i thought who would want to do these aquatic constructs and I, that started coming uh back to Chris's idea of an underground or underwater civilization. And I'm like, okay, we have the sea elves, but they already have enough sub races. What about dwarves? There's only like three or four kinds of dwarves. So I looked up aquatic dwarves and there's actually an AD&D publication called Raven's Bluff or Port of Raven's Bluff that had stats for aquatic dwarves and they had statted out a whole town, whole civilization of these dwarves. So I would love to to see Wizards of the Coast, if you're watching, bring those back. That would be awesome. I had one of those moments during a live stream, the discussion of the Beholder and it going underwater or being a, an aquatic creature. Somebody liked the idea so much, and actually there were a couple of people who liked the idea so much, but one person liked the idea so much as we were discussing it that they actually created the stat block, then they made powers for it. Some of the ray, eye rays were adjusted because they need to work underwater, not just in, in air, and I thought, 
Well, that's that's perfect. They sent me the document by email and said, Fred, can you share this with the community? And for the life of me, I can't remember if I ever did that. I'm actually feeling really guilty now as I sit here. Did I actually do what he asked me to do? It's like, did I put it where it needed to go? So now I have to go and find out if I actually followed up with that. But I thought it was a brilliant idea. I really liked it. Um, I like the idea of a beholder who just hates the world, hates everybody basically, doesn't trust anybody, and then has control of the water. Like, what's the first thing you're going to do? Tidal waves. I love these kind of questions, you know, because, like, I probably would have never created what I'm about to pitch to you guys if we didn't get a prompt like this. So these these are always a great time. And now the unveiling of what I did create, intellect devourer jellyfish. So you've got brains in the water with tendrils behaving similarly to jellyfish. But if you brush those tendrils onto your head, they go and... They'll just sink themselves into your skull. That was that was a quick idea I came up with, but the one that visually struck me when I was considering ideas, in one of my recent videos, we talked about Helmed Horrors. And I was like, I'm gonna put one underwater. Picture the old school idea of like a scuba diver's outfit. You know, you got the copper helmet, the big spherical thing with like viewports on the sides. We're gonna give this thing a swim speed instead of a fly speed. Arm it with a harpoon gun that can reel people in. Uh, we'll keep its high AC magic resistances spell immunities to certain spells fireball doesn't need to be on that list anymore we're underwater if you want to change it from construct you could throw a dead person in it and make it undead but otherwise we'll just throw some lights in it and keep it a construct that was the one i think would be very creepy to keep you know just suddenly in the, the murky depths oh there's somebody down here oh and we're being dragged okay I really like aquatic stuff one was the bahir you know that big lightning lizard with 16 legs it would be cool to make one that's very seaworthy and it's like a giant electric eel. One of my favorite monsters is the Remoraz. I was inspired because in Icewind Dale Rime of the Frost Maiden, there's a nest in an old glacier and in the water, the water's boiling and if you look in, there's like a parent Remoraz around all its eggs and it's young and it's pretty terrifying to have the boiling water go with it and I thought, why don't Remorazes get used in water more often? I actually did a poll to see what people think about how would you rule a Remoraz with its fire damage when it's underwater because it's like when you're underwater technically you resist fire damage would it be like a dragon turtle using its steam breath where it specifically says you don't resist the damage from the steam breath even though it's fire damage underwater because it's meant to be used underwater and so I'd, I'd love to see a remoraz and maybe it would be something that burrows into like the sea floor give it one of those angler bobs it already heats up its body and it can glow so maybe give it a lure to make things come up to it as it's burrowed on the sea floor and then it comes up and eats them or maybe it creates creates warm water and fish come around and then maybe it releases a bunch of steam to boil the fish and kill them instantly and then it just comes up out of the ground and feasts on them and then i thought okay what about dryads make a, a dryad where it, it, instead of it being tied to a tree it's tied to a coral reef or you could even put them in a bog you know they're tied to some bog tree and they're more seafaring that sort of thing they could be covered in sea anemones and kelp uh, i also thought of a lich this is kind of inspired by Dota 2 because the Lich hero there, because it usually floats around because the Lich like doesn't have legs in that game. One version of it, it's got an, like an anchor tied to it, like it was drowned at sea and then became a Lich. It'd be cool to have a Lich that's like imprisoned on the seafloor and it's like stuck to an anchor, but it's like a ruined anchor that maybe an order of paladins imprisoned it down there and because they couldn't destroy it, but they dropped it into the sea or something and it kind of has adapted sea-like appearances and powers. And then I also thought of like the Roper that looks like like a, a rock in a cave it would be cool to have a coral version of that that's based on like suffocating people underwater and strangling like like a boa constrictor oh, and then i also thought of dark mantles and hook horrors which are not used very often dark mantles they kind of look like big jellyfish in caves and they can make magical darkness and they usually pair well with hook horrors because hook horrors have blind sense or whatever tremor sense or something they can see in the darkness so they make a good pair but it'd be cool to have like one big dark mantle that's like as big as a whale and all the hook horrors like hook onto it like a bunch of barnacles or whatever they are that hook onto whales and uh, they go around the sea the mantle makes a big area of darkness like an octopus's ink and then the hook horror is like eat it and then the mantle gets to like eat the remnants or like some that kind of like symbiotic relationship would be cool and then last a rust monster but they're like they have a beaver dam and they make the beaver dam out of everyone's weapons and it's like a rust dam and yeah so you got these aquatic little bugs rust monster beaver dam that's my last idea i i loved all of these ideas but there's a, a few that i was surprised that weren't mentioned the first one is you could have an aquatic version of a fire elemental yeah maybe water elemental never mind um or you could <laughs> 
<laughs> boiling or water you, elemental. Hot iced tea. <laughs> Hot iced tea. There you go. Or or you could slap some gills on a Tarask. That's all you need to do. Just put some gills on it. But the ones that I wanted to ask is a Chimera. Nobody. That was one I was toying around with. What three heads would you put on a Chimera? My my first instinct was was shark, of course, shark, piranha, and seahorse. And I, I'm kind of interested. What everybody else? What three heads would you put on a water Chimera? Narwhal. I like seahorse. Otter. Anglerfish. Dragonfish. And shark. Anglerfish is a good one to put on there. So that's a great idea, Wally. Uh, different kinds of chimeras underwater. That's cool. I always want to run aquatic adventures like all the time, and I never get around to it. I, I keep building up this portfolio of aquatic creatures, and I never get around to it. But one day, one day I'm going to get to it. <laughs>